This is the GIS Level 1, QGIS Exercise 1. Begin by opening QGIS on your computer. Select the New Project icon in the upper left corner. A blank map will now open. Click the Save icon to name and save your project. We'll start by adding some data. Click the Data Source Manager button in the upper left. Then click the vector icon. We'll start by adding our vector data. Next to the vector data set box, click the browse button. And navigate to the GIS Level 1 folder that you downloaded, and then the GIS Level 1 data folder, and workshop exercise it. We're going to add all the files that end in .shp. As you may remember from the recordings, there are actually several components of a shapefile. Although we're only selecting the ones that have an extension of .shp, QGIS will actually be reading all the other files, so it's still important to keep them together. You can hold the control key to select more than one file. Click Cambridge Demographics, MBTA ARC, and MBTA Node and then the Open button. Then click Add. You may see this coordinate reference system window appear. This is because our project has a different coordinate system than the data layers we just added. This tool will change the project coordinate reference system to be the same as the data layers so they will appear less distorted on our screen. We discuss map projections and coordinate reference systems more in JS Level 2. For now, just select OK. Now we're ready to add our raster data. Click the raster data icon in the data source manager. Browse the same folder you were in before and select Cambridge underscore DEM dot TIF. Click open and then click add. We're done adding data layers for now, so you can hit close. Finally, we're going to add a base map to give our data layer some context. We're going to do that by using a plugin. As you may remember, because QGIS is an open source software, people develop special tools or plugins that anyone can use to enhance the capabilities. Start by going to the Plugins menu and select Manage and Install Plugins. Let's check to see if this plugin is installed. It's called Quick Map Services. On my computer, Quick Map Services is installed. If it is not installed on your computer, you'll see a button at the bottom to install it. Do that now. When you're finished, close the plugins window. To use the plugin, we'll go to the web menu at the top, Quick Map Services, select this open street map, and OpenStreetMap standard. This could take a minute to load on your computer because it's coming off a server on the web. Now that we have all our data layers, let's take a closer look at what we've added. The center of the screen is displaying all the data that we've added. The names of the data layers are in a panel on the left-hand side of the screen. For context, Cambridge DEM is an elevation model of Cambridge, Massachusetts, United States. Cambridge Demographics includes some demographic information for the city. MBTA is the public transportation system in the Boston metro area. MBTA ARC are the subway lines in Boston, Massachusetts. MBTA node are the subway stops. At the moment, our elevation model is actually covering a lot of our data. We can drag these layers so that whatever is on top will draw on the top of the screen. So let's drag the Cambridge DEM to the bottom and then the Cambridge Demographics right above that. Now we can see all of our data layers on top of one another. You can move around the map by using the pan tool, which is this hand. You can also zoom in and out. To center a particular layer, right click on that layer in the Layers pane and select Zoom to Layer. You can also turn layers on and off using the checkboxes next to them. 
The menus at the top of the screen show various tools you can use to analyze vector and raster data, which we'll cover a bit more in the GIS Level 2 workshop. New menus may appear as you add additional plugins into your QGIS. Now we'll look a little more closely at the data layers we just added. Are these vector or raster data? And if they are vector data, what type? Feel free to pause the video if you need to think about it. QGIS uses symbols that are pretty easy to tell what type of data that we have. The MBT arc is a line, the node is a point, and the Cambridge demographics is a polygon. These are all vectors. The Cambridge DEM is a raster because it's a continuous surface. In order to see the underlying data for a particular layer, we can right click on any of the data layers and open the attribute table. What columns are included with the MBTA arc data? We can see there's a column for line, which is the color of the subway line, a line for the route, a grade, which is an internal number, and then the length of that. If you wanted to know more about what all these codes mean, you would want to find the metadata, which we'll talk about later in the workshop series. Let's try to open the attribute table for the Cambridge DEM. Is there one? You'll see that there's actually not an attribute table. Why might that be? Raster data don't always have an attribute table. This is just because they're a continuous set of numbers and can be difficult to display in an attribute table. All the data we've added were in a format the GIS system could readily read. Now we're going to add data from the Cambridge Restaurants layer, which is not currently in a shapefile format. But we can convert it from a CSV to point data by plotting the coordinates that are included with that data layer. Let's go back to our data source manager. We'll go to the Add Delimited Text Layer button. Next to the file name box, click the Browse button. Navigate to the Workshop Exercises folder you were using before, and click on the Cambridge Restaurant CSV and open. QGIS will fill in information that it finds from the CSV file. In the Geometry Definition section, make sure that point coordinates is selected. That longitude is in the X field and latitude is in the Y field. You also want to make sure that the Geometry CRS, which is the coordinate reference system, is set to this WGS84. If this is not the case on your computer, you can click the Set CRS button, and then you can search for WGIS84. Once this is all filled in, click Add, and then close the window. We'll see that our Restaurants layer actually appeared below the demographic data. If we turn the demographic data off, our restaurants now appear on the map. Let's save our project. You can keep it open for the next exercise.